Uh, and we just hope, trust, and pray uh, that, that along your journey, things that you have been blessed uh, to be uh, fortunate enough to be here this morning, that you understand what a privilege it is and what a friend we have in Jesus. Isn't Jesus all right this morning? Isn't Jesus all right this morning? God's been good to you. Somebody ought to say so. Amen. I want to show you this text, and I'm going to let you go home because y'all praise God this morning. Uh, you, 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 know, you didn't let the weather stop you, so I'm going to show you this text, and we're going to get through this text. I'm going to let you go home. I want to speak to you from uh, the subject matter. What are you thinking about? Uh, because we serve the most high God. Amen. Uh, and he owns everything. The song that says he owns the cattle on how many hills? On a thousand hills. And so everything that is belongs to the Lord. And everything you think you got, you only borrowed it from God. Amen. Uh, it's when we get in the right mentality, we begin to understand that God got the whole world in his hand. Uh, he is totally in control no matter what you're going through. Watch the text very quickly. Uh, uh, the text uh, demonstrates uh, the awesomeness of God that Paul had come to know. Uh, there's nothing worse in the world uh, than being a Christian by appearance only. I said something. That, that, the thing that, 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 that made folk not see Jesus is when folk that know Jesus don't act like they know Jesus. And there are times in, in everybody's life, amen, that, 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 that sometimes it's hard to keep your mind on Christ. Y'all ought to say amen. Uh, Paul was in Philippi and he's He's writing to the church Philippians, and he's writing to them. And you know the story. He's in dire straits. Uh, he is in prison, number one. He's in prison in an environment that geographically the Roman uh, elite force, when they retired from the military, uh, they had taken this area for themselves, and, and they had put all their generals and captains who were loyal to the finest land, which was in Philippi, and they were stationed all around. So most likely during those days, the church was surrounded by the Roman government elite force who had retired, and here you come preaching Jesus, and they put him in jail. Uh, at all places that you did not want to go, you didn't want to go to jail in Philippi because uh, that's where the soldiers lived. Uh, and so not only is he in jail and bondage for preaching the kingdom of God and preaching against circumcision and, and preaching against challenging head within and without the church, you might remember, may recall, uh, Philippians 1, about the 15th verse, he says, I am set for the defense of the gospel. Uh, you may remember they said there are some folk, in other words, while he's arrested and going through stuff, and you can relate, you ought to say, man, while he's arrested and going through stuff, he has brethren there that are mine is not on Christ, and they messing with him while he's in jail. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to jail before, but the last thing that I need you to do is call me and tell me you understand how I feel. You don't understand how I feel because you're not where I am. Amen. Uh, uh, and, and, and then I don't like folk talking about why I'm in jail unless you're the lawyer or the judge. Y'all might say amen. And so folk are talking, and Paul said, there are some of you who are messing with me while I'm in jail, but you need to know this. Uh, some of you are out here trying to take my place and preach Christ, but know that I'm set for the defense of the gospel. While he's in jail, he gets sick. And so the church sends Aphrodite uh, uh, to Paul while he's in jail. And, and, and he, he gets sick, and he's almost ready to die. And Paul uh, begins to prepare himself because he's not just sick, but he's sick unto death. Now, I want to, because some of you are missing this right now because you, you ate good breakfast and God been good to you. He in jail. Y'all understand? He's in jail. He's sick. He's not just sick, but he's sick unto death. His friend came in to help him, and he done got sick. He's, he's in jail, he's sick. But he's still giving God praise yeah. and glory. How you know? Because he says in, in verse one, of chapter one, verse twenty-one, he says, "I'm caught between the fix for the meat to live is Christ, and to die is gain." There is power in how you think in the midst of your circumstances, and I don't care what you're locked up in or what you're dealing with, and I don't care how hard times get. But you can think your way through anything. You can think your way into a blessing that you never could imagine while you're on your deathbed. This 
sermon is for people who like to think. If you're not a thinker, you're not going to understand this message. If you're not going through something, you're not going to understand this message. You're going to have to be a thinker because the battle today is not like it was in Paul's day. They are not arresting people for preaching here in the United States. They're, they're not stoning folk for talking about Jesus here in the United States. The, the attack is not in the physical, but the attack is in the supernatural. And what you may not be arrested in a, and incarcerated, your spirit was arrested a long time ago. Your joy got stopped along the highway of business and got stopped a long time ago. And you had a smile, you had been yourself in weeks and months of Sunday. Satan has taken you and formed a weapon against you, and God forbid is prospering. Your joy, your victory, your hope has been accosted that you can't even give God praise this morning. And Paul says, What I need you to understand that in spite of all that we're going through in the church and out of church, there is a way you need to think about what you're going through. Amen. Now, now, this is the hard part. This is the hard part. If you're going through something right now, can you say amen? amen. Finally, brother, watch this. Whatsoever things that are true. Now, this is one of the only chapters in the book in the Bible where God tells you what to think. And then he also tells you what not to think. Give me my Bible. I want to show you very quickly. In, in the text, he says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, uh, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, if there be any report, good report, there be any virtue, if there be any praise, I want you to think on these things. And then he says that whatever you have learned and received of me, uh, that you heard from me, seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Something about the way you think constructs peace in your life. Amen. Amen. How do you know? Because in between that peace is another piece. Move with me, if you will, into chapter four, chapter four and verse number four. Rejoice in the Lord always, even when you're sick, even when you're disturbed in your spirit. And again, I say rejoice. He is dealing with the internal working of your mind in the midst of perilous times, in terrible times. He says, I want you to rejoice when you don't feel like rejoicing. I want you to rejoice when times are rough. I want you to rejoice when folk running you down. I want you to rejoice when folk let you down. Rejoice, and again, I say rejoice. Amen. Let your moderation be known uh, to men that the Lord is at hand. In other words, the best time for folk to see you a Christian is when it don't look like God with you, but you need to let them know God is with me. The best time for folk to see you know Jesus is when you're going through something, you should have been out of your mind, when you should have threw in the towel a long time ago, when you should have just said, I quit, I ain't gonna go to church anymore, I'm just gonna go stay at the house and go on to hell. That's the time for folk to see that God resides in you. Now watch what he says. He said, rejoice. He said, be careful of nothing, but in everything in prayer and thanksgiving, he said, I want you to do something for me. I want you to make your request known to God. And whatever you're going through, you need to still talk to God. In other words, it starts with God and it ends with God. And watch what he says again in this piece. He said, in the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Paul, how in the world can you be in prison? Could you be facing death? Your friend even came in and died. Folk are talking about you. Folk are messing with you. You're going through one thing. You've been shown. You've been rocked. You've been ridiculed. You've been through hell and back. How in the world can you have peace in the midst of all of that? He said, it's because of the way I think. Finally, brethren, I want you to think on these things. The way you think is significant. You are one thought away from being on top of the world. You are one thought away from victory. You are one thought away of moving to another level. What Paul is doing is the thing that we call in theory the pigment, the the pigment effect, where in which uh, the pigment effect in which uh, you sculpt the way a person thinks 
about your thoughts about him or her. In other words, he said to the church in so many words, I want you to move your level of thinking up. I want you to move past what you see that's going on, and we're going to another level. In other words, I want this church to really grow. I gotta start teaching this church to think of themselves on a higher level than what they really are. And what will happen is the church will move to the level, it's an effect, it'll move by the thoughts that are scope. Amen. I don't know what you're thinking about, but when I see this church, I think this church has tremendous capability. And let me say this very I don't want I don't want to do like have you seen the Geico commercial? Y'all see the Geico commercial? He got up there and he wanted to do the uh, the dude the, 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 I'm gonna pronounce his word right. He wanted to do this uh a Pygmalion effect, and as he's doing this uh a Pygmalion effect, uh Pinocchio steps out in front of all he said, We are uh, I see great potential uh, in this group of people. He said, I see great potential in you, and his nose started growing. And I see great potential in you, and his nose grew out a little further. I don't want to be lying in the pool here. I'm saying to you that we can build a church in San Diego if folk buy into this church and that they think on a higher level, we can get out of this building, quit rushing out of here, run like we don't have a God, and we start thinking like we got a God. We can do some great stuff in this church in the midst of all of our challenges. church, who didn't come to church. The next time somebody prayed on you, don't worry about who didn't come to church. Thank God you in the church house. Amen. Thank God more than you in the church house. We gotta think, we gotta quit worrying about each other because see, this effect not only not only affects how we move, but you, you, you've been allowing other folk to think negative about you and push their negativism on you and it has sculpted you into what they think about you. The word itself is derived uh, from uh, a, myth, a Greek mythology, which is a pers persuasive or a, a persuasive argument, believes that the power of how people think shape thoughts and shape one's life. It's a phenomenon that has been researched and proven that the way you think will produce the outcome or the destiny in your life. If you keep telling your child that they are dumb and stupid and don't know nothing, it will mold and shape them and you will see a behavior that appears to be what you said it was. But if you tell that child, baby, you can do it, I know you can do it because my blood is in you. Isn't that what God is telling us? You can do it because I bled on Cambridge Cross for every one of you. Guess what? The church will rise to the occasion. Well, we need folks to stop looking like Christians and start being Christians and think on a higher level. Paul said, think on these things. What are you thinking about this morning? What do you think about it? When you came to church this morning, were you thinking about owning your own business? When you think about it, ain't nothing wrong with that. I don't know who told you to be a Christian. You got to be poor, but they're alive. The truth ain't in them. As a matter of fact, I think it's contrary to the popular men. Ain't nothing wrong about thinking about having something in life. You got to think. We, we allow folk to shape and mold our thinking. There's nothing wrong about thinking about how good and how wonderful it's going to be when you get to the top. We got to have folk to lift their head up, quit sit up in God's house, thinking like, whoa, it's me. I'm tired of woe is you. What you going to do? That's the question. What do you can't keep sitting there? What are you going to do? Don't worry about what everybody else is saying. What are you thinking this morning? Oh, I'm going through this. Oh, I'm going through this. Only something you know that nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody. Let me tell you something. If you were thinking in the midst of yourself of who God is in your life, it'll change your outcome. Amen. If you turn your lemons in the lemonade, and if you're real nasty, you'll flavorize your lemonade. I don't want just lemonade, but I want raspberry lemonade. Somebody can say amen. I want tango lemonade. I want watermelon lemonade. It started with a thought. Somebody say, not just lemonade, but let's add some flavor. Uh, to this situation. In other words, you got some problems brewing in your life, and I'm gonna get into the book in this a minute, but get back into the book. You got some problems in life, don't just go through it. You gotta go through your problem with first class. You gotta tell her, I might be down right now, but I'll be up tomorrow. You might be laughing right now, but you don't know me like that. I got a God that's able to help me, to save me in my times of persecution and destruction. Like, watch the Bible. Here's some 
folk that you know, keep some folk that that look like Christians, but but not really Christians. They got their Christian coffee mug. Got Jesus on the coffee mug. They got this uh, Christian peppermint. Uh huh, a fifty cent peppermint. They walk around with that Christian band. What would Jesus do? Uh huh. And, and these are the type of folk you're trying to build churches with. Got their T-shirt on, their Reese's Pieces peanut butter cup. Got their flag on their car. I'm a child of God. And they just walking around. They ain't thinking about nothing but themselves. Lady drops her groceries on the ground. And these people walk right by. They ain't thinking about Jesus. With their Reese's peanut, peanut butter shirt on. And they bang on their car. And drove off and went on about her business. Well, you know what? When you have enough folk like that. That call themselves Christians. The question that come to me. To mind to me is. What in the world was he thinking about? With all the stuff he saw. Folk are falling down every day. And folk are asking. What in the world are folk thinking about? Well, some are not thinking at all. Can somebody say amen? amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24. And verse number 44. The Bible says that at the time you think not. Here come Jesus. There's somebody sitting here right now. That's not thinking. That's sitting here thinking that I have till tomorrow. You're not thinking at, uh, at all right now. Paul said I want you to think on these things. What if God came back tomorrow? He can come back in the twinkling. Oh God, am I right about it? You're not thinking. You don't have tomorrow promise something to you. What if you're wrong and every church is not the Lord's church? You're not thinking. You'll mess yourself up. He said let me tell you something. Be ready also for the time you think not. Here I come. While you sitting around talking about what happened to you in the past, God said you should have been preparing for your future. Y'all not listen to me right now. Some are thinking in vain. Listen to the Bible again. Some are thinking in vain. He said, do you not know uh, that, do you think that the scriptures uh, say it in vain? That the spirit in me uh, is lust under envy. Uh, in other words, uh, he said, let me tell you something. Uh, you're not going to just fix it yourself uh, because there's an internal spirit inside of you that if you don't watch it, it'll cause you to live in lust and envy. All you'll know is what I want and what I need. And when you talk to God, it'll be I want and I need and I want what Paul said in Philippians 4 and 11. I learned that no matter what state that I'm in, I learned that way to be content. I want you to know that some are thinking or not thinking at all. Some are thinking in vain while others are thinking uh, 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 thinking uh, uh, boldly in their situation. Listen to what the Bible said. For I say that through the grace of God is given to me to every man that among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think of himself uh, but soberly as God uh, had distributed uh, a spirit of faith into every man. Uh, I'm glad that, they, that there's some that have learned that there's power in thinking. Somebody ought to say amen. If you're not happy this morning it's because you're not thinking happy. I don't care what you're going through. Uh, when you're going through something you got to think yourself happy. Now folks don't think you're crazy when you're laughing in the repo office. Folks don't think something wrong with you. When they quit you, you tell them it's okay, baby. Go on about yourself. Go on about yourself. Go help yourself. Y'all out here about it. You gotta think yourself happy. If you're not happy this morning, it's cause you don't want to be happy. And you don't want to be happy, I can't do nothing for you. But I can tell you this, Paul said when he was arrested by King Agrippa, he said, I think myself happy. Paul said there is something about how you think. It's not anybody else's fault. Their words, their mouth has no control over you. You can think yourself happy. You can turn that frown into a smile. You have no business sitting up here looking funny right now. You ought to think happy. Everybody that's thinking happy, if you're happy and you know it, can you say amen? amen. Good God, my you can think yourself happy. If something makes you happy, it'll make you sad. When, when, when you allow something to scope you, when you allow money to make you happy, when you don't have money, you, you, you'll be sad. If you don't have friends that make you happy, all I want is some friends. You'll find yourself that friends ain't always friends. Have our witness up in here. You have to think happy. You have to put yourself in a position. And once you think happy, uh, then you'll move into a place of boldness. And when you can say, I think bold against so. Now this is important. I want to stop right here for a minute. He said, now there are some that think we think bold against. When you are in power of yourself, Folk that rise up against you, rather than shudder in fear, you get real bold. When folks say you can't do nothing, you start looking at them funny. Somebody told Bolt that he'll never.
never run as fast as others. Fastest in the world. Somebody said you'll never get that airplane to fly. But Anita and Earhart and the rest of them found a way to do what? To fly. Somebody said we'll never reach the moon. But they kept thinking. And I guess, I suppose, they made it to the moon. Somebody told you you will never do it. And you got to get bold. Just because you said I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Y'all not listening to me this morning. When folks try to talk negative against you, that's the time you need to stand up and say, do you know who my God is? Do you know what God I serve? He said, Paul said, there's some that try to call me a sinner, and I got to get bold and let them understand. Look, at, I know who I am. When you, when your mind is right, it doesn't matter what other folks say about you. It matters what you know about yourself. Watch this, watch this. In the argument of circumcision, there was an argument that Father Abraham and his circumcision system given by God was somehow more elite than Christianity. Paul responded in his letter to the church of, 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 the, of, of, the, of Philippians, watch this in verse five, of verse number four. He said, though I also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he have whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. He very quietly and very clear, cleverly makes certain assertions that you need to be mindful of this morning. Paul said, number one, you walk around talking about you better than me. And ain't nothing wrong about feeling good about yourself. Because if you don't feel good about yourself, nobody else Amen. is going to feel good about you. Amen. I don't know what you're thinking right now. I know life got you thinking that you're not this and you're not that and you are another class of folk, but it's all about how you think about it. Yeah. And don't you give poor power over what they think about you. You need to know what God has done for you. Yeah. Paul said, I'll address this issue from a biblical standpoint. He said, concerning circumcision, Abraham was circumcised when he was nine, but I was circumcised on the eighth day. Y'all didn't get that issue. Uh -huh. he, he was too old to be circumcised. Uh -huh. but, but God worked it out for him. That's okay. But my sort of the new circumcision, I was circumcised on the eighth day. I was circumcised in the newness of Christ, not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Not only that, but, but not only did God bring me into the same through without circumcision of him, he said, but I am of the tribe of Israel. I am of Israel, of the stock of Israel. Why is that important? Because Abraham comes from a city called Ur. I want you to stand with me right quick. I want you to I'm, I'm do right here. Right here. You, you get this, we can go home. I want you to go through the rest of my slide. But watch this. Abraham comes from a city called Ur. You are. It's a place in the Bible according to Joshua 24, in which his father lived, where he was the master adulterer built. He built idols. They practiced adultery. So Abram is born with the psychodynamics of an adulterer building father. In, in, in Europe, it's a place that was so given to the worship of astrology and that's why you find your Libras and your, and your, and your, and your Virgos, uh, uh, Capricorns. Uh, I had not close yet. Uh, Aries, Geminis, Pisces. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. They worship the moon god and they worship astrology. But not only did they worship astrology, but their chief God was called sin. Abraham, as a little boy, grew up. He was, he was not on the side of Israel as Paul is saying, but he grew up in a place that was totally against God. Uh, not only that, but his mother, being a participant of that worship system, at least 85% of the women had to serve. They done fell in the baptism pool. That's how I baptize him again anyway. Amen. His mother, are y'all with me? His mother would have had to serve as a temple prostitute. 
of Abram focuses on what happened in his childhood. If Abraham focused on what his father was doing, and if Abraham focused on what his mom was doing, when God called him, he, the church would have said, or the people said, he's not of the right stock. But when God calls us, he does not bless you according to what your mama did. He does not bless you according to what your father did. But he bless you what you can do for yourself. Y'all not listening to me now. And so the question is Abraham, because he brings him up in, 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 in chapter 3. What were you thinking when God promised to bless you when you shouldn't have even known God? There are some of us who've been through so much stuff, we don't even know God. But when God calls you, what are you thinking about? God called Abraham. Abraham immediately responds, yes, Lord, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. Well, what preacher, what's, what's significant about this? The question is that when God calls you this morning, this is one of my points. Maybe I preach this later. When God calls you this morning, you don't need to focus on what folks are saying about you. You need to walk around here like you weren't supposed to be here. You ought to know that you're here because God called you to this place. Sir. Matter of fact, Peter said in front of Peter chapter 3, it is meant for me. As long as I, I think it is meant for me, that as long as I'm in this tabernacle, somebody ought to listen to me right now, to stir up the spirit. What you need? Uh, Abraham, when God called him, he spoke to Abraham. Spirit, he spoke to him, and not his circumstances. Abraham responded to him. And in Gen uh, Genesis chapter 22, and God says to him, now listen to this, his background, his experience, does not know God. Yet and still, God says, take your only son and take him up to the altar, and I want you to kill him. What y'all thinking right now? What y'all thinking right now? 